concern about the present and the future, and that's why we, we too have similar sort of challenges, and all the time we'll be having this kind of uh, uh, um, consideration. Now, just to get to the subject of waqf, uh, essentially a very literal meaning of it means to stop, okay? Uh, and, and, and this you can see, like on, on several of the, uh, in, in Arabia, you'll find the stop signs saying waqf. And you see also at, uh, when, you, when you go for hajj, many of you, you've got this wukuf e arafat. So it's about standing and standing still. Okay. Now, in terms of the sharia, uh, it actually means that you've got to stop the ownership of your wealth. Okay. You've got to... You've got to stop the ownership of your wealth, and you've got to transfer that ownership to the ownership of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, for example, uh, you, uh, just like typically the, the masjid, people contribute towards the building of the mosque, uh, you no longer own that money. It now belongs to the community, it belongs to Allah. The mosque belongs to Allah. But now, um, that can be done in uh, the, the, the transfer or the, the transfer of the ownership can be done uh, with your money. It could be, could be done with any other asset, movable or immovable. Okay? Um, it has to be permanent. So once you give it, it's gone. You can't take it back. It's a gift to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what you do is the, the, you dedicate the fruit of it or the usufruct either to your family or to charity. Okay, so for example, if we have a thousand rands or a thousand rupees, you invest it, uh, let's, let's say it's made into a wakaf. Uh, the wakaf earns, say, hundred rupees out of it. We can only spend the hundred rupees. We cannot spend the thousand rupees. That, that thousand rupees has to remain intact, capital, all the time. Uh, it cannot be sold. It cannot be inherited. It cannot be gifted away. It belongs to Allah, it's period, okay? Uh, it has to be done for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is one of the primary motivations and primary intentions. Now, there's several uh, sort of um, uh, uh, hows and uh, how to establish a wakaf and uh, regulations and so forth around it. Of course, it's an it's a, it's a, uh, institution that started right very early uh, in the history of Islam. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's tons and tons of books and fiqh uh, literature on the subject. I'm not going to go into it. I, I, I just want to give you some basic idea so that you just get a basic understanding of it. And, and of course, uh, the, the, it, it can be dealt with uh, in, in depth as we go along. Um, so, I think this has been covered as well, that Islam is a comprehensive way of life. Uh, it incorporates lots of other institutions, legal, political, economic, and so forth, social institutions. And, and this is, uh, Wakaf is only part of this whole infrastructure that, that is being sort of developed within the community. And I uh, mentioned briefly the nature of the Islamic economy, that it's about caring and sharing. It's not about greed, and it's not about maximization of profits, and it's not a consumerist society. It's, it's, it's a society of development and growth and so forth. So, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's what in South Africa, there's an equivalent term called Ubuntu, which means that you, uh, it's, it's about communities that grow together, share together, and, and, and develop together. So the issue about solidarity comes here. You know, as we, as we develop this institution, for example, if I have to ask you, does... Um, the community of Mauritius have one capital fund that belongs to the community. And, and, and uh, invariably, in many communities, the answer is no. It's because this legacy is lost. At one stage, yes, we, we did have it. Um, the other th uh, very important, we've, we've heard of the Makasid of the Sharia. Now, I think that it's very important that we, we understand that any... Uh, Islamic development or any institution needs to actually fit into these five major makasid or higher objectives of the Sharia. 
and that is the protection of the dean, the protection of the self, the protection of intellect, the, 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 the protection of your progeny, the protection of wealth. Actually, creation and protection, promotion and protection. So the makasid of the sharia are, are, are very basic to this whole idea. Then we talk about empowerment, and, and one of the challenges that we talked about was empowerment here as well. And as mentioned, that you cannot be empowered unless you own, control, and manage. Okay, three very important and basic uh, ideas that uh, it's no sense uh, you actually, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's about like the conventional banks. The community here uh, deposits monies into a, a conventional bank. The conventional bank uh, takes that money and develops uh, areas around the seaside and so forth without actually reinvesting in the people that have actually deposited the money there in the first place. So, and, and the reason for that is because you, you, don't, you don't own, you don't control, you don't manage the institution. So very important that uh, if, we, if we are to be empowered, then we need to have control and management of our resources. Um, infaq and bir, there are more verses in the Quran about infaq than about salah and hajj and all the other five pillars of Islam put together. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِكُونَ بَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِكُونَ أَمْوَالُهُمْ Several verses in the Quran talk about infaq and that is about spending and, and, and uh, as a general term spending in the way of Allah or spending within the economy. And then the word bir, lantana laysa birra an tawallu wujuhakum, about righteousness, okay? So, so this righteousness is very important in terms of developing spiritu uh, spiritually. So some of those basic concepts, uh, then maybe just a very brief to tell you where does Waqaf fit into the broader, uh, I, I would put infarc as a uh, as something that is overriding all of this, o uh, and, and, and bir as something that is embedded in all of this, um, that uh, your sadaqah is your umbrella charity, uh, and with that you get your compulsory charities that are zakah and fitra, uh, and then your voluntary or mustahab recommended charities, and in, it depends on uh, you know, various uh, communities, how they interpret uh, for example, South Africa has got a very peculiar uh, term of sadka, uh, which originates from India, which is uh, different from the sadaka that, that we talk about. Uh, Lila, waqf, is voluntary. Uh, sadaka jaria, which is also waqf, uh, and kard hasan. Uh, then you would get, as waqf can be three different categories, waqf khairi, which is public or charitable waqfs, uh, work of Mushtarak, which is uh, part public, part family, that's a combination, and work of Ahli, which is a family work of. Okay? And, and of course, there are other derivatives, of, of course, that uh, Brother Zubair mentioned the, the work based Takaful model. So you could get that as a specialized type of work of, and maybe we need to add that as a category now, that as, a, uh, as more specialized work of, restricted uh, uh, in. in, in, in in uh, closed communities, because the, the Takaful is a closed community of members, and maybe the, the cooperative can also fit into that category. Um, basically, the Waqaf Khairi, that's a charitable Waqaf, or any other Waqaf, has to have investment assets. It has to have, there's no question about it, because your original contribution has to remain capital and it has to remain permanent. So you, you have to have investment assets. And this is where the Islamic banking sector comes in, the investment banks and so forth, where they sort of work hand in hand, integrated with the OCAF institutions to assist them in their investment opportunities. Uh, because the, the focus of the organization or the institution may be uh, very different from the, 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 the uh, focus of the bank, for example. So you need that to generate income. Because remember, your thousand rand or thousand rupee is sitting here. It has to generate income to fund 
your religious assets, for example, your masjids, your madrasas, and so forth, and also to fund your social infrastructure assets, your schools, clinics, homes for widows, orphans, and several of these other issues here. For example, education. For example, if you're talking about uh, erosion of moral values, so you need to have, again, programs and uh, projects to, 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 to develop that. Your poverty alleviation programs could come out of that funding. Uh, the, the important thing is that you've got sustainable funding coming out from here. And that's a very key point about Wakaf. Uh, the same thing was Wakaf Ahli or Wakaf Mushtarak, that the core asset must be uh, any type of asset. It could be uh, farms, flats, shops, houses, whatever. Okay? Uh, and, and then the, the beneficiaries here could be your family or maybe up to second or third generation. In some countries, they've actually restricted it to about third generation or up to about 60 years. In others, uh, you know, it has gone on for generations. Eventually, the distribution becomes so small that it becomes irrelevant. So scholars have sort of suggested that it go to maybe up to the third generation. And then you could have other beneficiaries as well. You may have a sick auntie or somebody in the family that it could actually go to as well. So that you, broadly, you've got the two types of waka, three types of wakafs, wakaf ahli, wakaf mushtarak, wakaf khairi, okay, which is your public wakaf. Uh, where did all this actually originate? Okay, the, uh, it is said that the first uh, wakaf was the Masjid of Kuba. Some say that uh, the Kaaba was the first one. Okay, uh, that it was dedicated to Allah, and there were people that contributed to it. It didn't just come out of the sky. Uh, the Quran doesn't mention the word waqf. Okay? The Quran has got several other verses and, 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 and one of the primary verses that has driven the waqf system is the verse in Lantanalul uh, uh, birra hatta tunfiku mimma tuhibun. That is the primary verse that, that uh, and people say that that verse created a revolution in Medina in terms of waqf making. Because that's where, for example, uh, Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu comes to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and asks him, "I've got this orchard, and at that time the agriculture and the economy of the of Medina was agricultural. So he has an uh, an orchard in Khaybar, and he says to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I have this valuable piece of land. Uh, what can I do with it?' And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam advises him to make this into a wakaf, into a sadaqah jaria, and to use it, to, to, to use its income to help the poor, the needy, the mujahideen, uh, the family, and uh, the general ummah. Uh, the land, the farm remains intact, the trees remain intact, but only the fruits of it is permitted to be used. Then he also told him that it cannot be sold, it cannot be gifted away, it cannot be inherited. So it's a wakaf, it belongs to Allah, period. End of story. Uh, various other Sahaba, actually even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam inherited through a person by the name of Mukhairik seven orchards and the Prophet himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made wakafs. Uh, various Sahaba. Sahaba, uh, we know that, uh, and people talk about the, that first generation of Muslims who, who without uh, their sacrifices we wouldn't have been here. And, and uh, uh, it is said that almost every single Sahaba that had some form of wealth had made a wakaf. So, isn't it strange that when, when, when uh, the, the, ex the, the, the exemplars of Islam were, making, were, were creating institutions that we sit here in the 20th century or the 14th or 15th century, and we find that where are